Hey guys, M here from Transformers and Video Games, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be discussing my Transformers Siege Voyager Class Optimus Prime, and by the end of the video, I'm going to let you know if I think that this is a figure that's worthy enough to add to your collection. Please like this video and leave me a comment, and if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel. My goal is to hit a thousand subscribers as soon as possible, and I really can't do it without your help. Anyways, that's enough about that. On with the review. Before we take a look at the figure itself, let's have a quick look at the packaging. All of the Transformer Siege Voyager class figures come in window boxes, which I think display quite nicely for the mitten box collectors. One side of the box has been cut at an angle, and in this case we see some really nice artwork of Optimus Prime. As I've said before, I really think that this is some of the best retail Transformers artwork that we've gotten in years. On the other side of the box we see a number of popular characters that are being released in the Siege line, and a cool picture of Cybertron down below. The back of the box shows the figure in robot mode and in alt mode, and it tells you that the transformation takes 27 steps, and they also show that Optimus Prime is compatible with the Battle Masters that have also been released in the Transformers Siege line. Inside the box, the figure is packaged in robot mode, which, along with his gun and axe, have been attached to a plastic clamshell with a number of ties, which will take a minute to cut in order to finally free the figure. Here we are with the figure out of box, and my knee-jerk reaction is that it looks quite impressive for a retail figure, and in hand he has a nice weight to him compared to other figures that we've seen in the recent past. Optimus Prime is a really nice head sculpt, with eyes that have been painted blue, which looks great, but am I the only collector who misses the light piping that we used to get around 10 years ago? The figure has an Autobot faction symbol on his left shoulder, translucent blue windows on his chest, which shows some really nice circuitry details underneath, a grey plastic grill for his midsection, a white stripe that's very reminiscent of the G1 toy, and some nice yellow painted details on his waist section that are very cartoon accurate, but I honestly don't like the battle damage paint details that have been included on this figure at all. I honestly would have preferred that they use the additional paint applications in a more meaningful way on the figure. They've done a nice job on the legs, again with the exception of the battle damage on the thighs. They've opted to use grey plastic for his leg vents, which I think was the right choice, rather than leaving them unpainted blue plastic, or painting them grey after the fact. Looking at the back of the figure, he has a rather large backpack, but I personally don't find it a problem at all. They've included a lot of nice molded details on it, and it honestly looks more like a jetpack to me than a backpack, so from that perspective, it's just not a big deal to me. The back of his forearms do have some truck kibble on them, and the back of his lower legs are hollow, but I would much prefer to see this than to see them make the inner legs hollow, since most people don't show the back of the figure when they're displaying them on a bookshelf with the rest of their collection. Speaking about the truck kibble on the back of his forearms, they form the lower sides of the truck mode as well as the fog lights at the front of the truck, but I noticed that the lights have some molded details inside them that make them look a little bit like Gatling guns, so if you swing them around in robot mode, you have some hands-free machine guns, which adds some play value and doesn't look too bad. Here's a look at the ion blaster that was included with the figure. Although it's fairly hollow on both sides, they've disguised it well by including a lot of molded details that really enhance the look of the weapon. Here's how the Transformer Siege ion blaster stacks up against the G1 version. They're obviously different looking, but you can see how the new version was inspired by the old design. Optimus Prime also comes with a dual mech Energon strike shield. Now generally I can take or leave the Energon axes that come with most Optimus Prime figures, but this one serves as a shield as well which is kind of cool and adds to the play value of the toy. Okay, now let's get Optimus Prime armed up with his accessories, starting with his Ion Blaster. The gun is the perfect size and looks really good in his hand. I attempted to put his G1 Blaster in his left hand, but the gun peg that he holds is a little bit short on mine, and it's not a great fit, so I didn't bother showing it in my review. Now we'll go ahead and put the dual mech Energon Strike Shield in his left hand. When I first saw it in the package, I thought it was kind of a throwaway accessory and didn't think that it was going to look good, but it surprisingly works for the figure in robot mode. Initially I was going to put a Repro Label Autobot faction symbol in the center of it to cover up the one that's been molded out of black plastic, but it's actually kind of grown on me, so I'm just going to leave it the way it is. 
As advertised on the back of the box, Optimus Prime can interact with the Battle Masters and Blast effects that have been released in the Transformers Siege line so far. Here he is with Autobot Fire Drive from Wave 1, better known as Firebolt if you're a G1 fan. I think it looks okay, but not great in Optimus Prime's hand. I don't know, for some reason, I think it looks better with other figures from the line. Not only does it fit in his hand, but you can also peg it into one of the holes on his left or right forearms, if you prefer that look. Again, I don't love the way it looks with Optimus Prime, but leave me a comment in the comments section and let me know which figure you think it looks best with. As I mentioned earlier, the dual mech Energon strike shield transforms from an axe to a shield. To do this, collapse the large and the small blades, then rotate the axe handle where the base meets the shield, and peg it into place at the center of the shield, and that's all there is to it. The shield then easily pegs into either forearm. I generally peg mine into his left, so that his right hand is free to take out Decepticons with his Ion Blaster. Again, I actually think that the shield works and was a nice additional accessory for this particular figure. Good call, Hasbro. All right, now let's talk articulation. His head will move up and down a little bit and rotate a full 360 degrees. His arms will rotate a full 360 degrees at the shoulder. There is another joint just above his biceps with full rotation. If you move the smokestack out of the way, his arm will also move up and down around 90 degrees. His arm can bend at the elbow. And his fist will swivel at the wrist a full 360 degrees. It's nice to see waist articulation, which means that we can put him in very dynamic poses. Now moving on to his lower body, his legs will kick out at his sides and he can nearly do the full splits. On the same hip joint, his legs will kick forward and back. He has a great range of motion with his knee articulation, and they will also rotate a full 360 degrees. And last but not least, he has fantastic ankle tilt joints so that you can get him in a number of great poses. And that's it for articulation. Here's a quick comparison between Siege Optimus Prime and a vintage G1 version of the figure. Although you can see a number of similarities, I'd honestly say that when you compare them side by side in robot mode, the Siege version is probably more inspired by some of the masterpiece figures that we've seen in the last number of years than he is by the G1 version of the toy. Neither one of them looks stellar from behind, but I think that can be expected. It's a bit of a shame that the new version of Optimus Prime has the short smokestacks. I'll never understand the modern child safety laws. I think there's more of a chance of someone poking an eye out with his ion blaster than there is with the smokestacks, but it is what it is, I suppose. Now let's get into the transformation. Start off by opening the window section on his chest, then rotate the head forward into the chest cavity and close the windows. Rotate the legs 180 degrees at the knees, pull the side sections out about 90 degrees, then flip the panels around and peg them into place. Do the same thing on the other side. Move the wheel sections from the inside of the legs to the outside of the legs. and bring the toes and the heel spurs together. Peg the legs together until you hear a satisfying click. Next, you're gonna to wanna to move a few things out of the way to get clearance. Then separate the hips from the waist section and rotate it back. Spin the roof of the truck around. Then fold at the grill section, the sides of the truck, and the bumper. Pull the wheels out from the sides of the figure and rotate them down to the underside of the vehicle. I didn't do it here, but they actually peg into place down below.
rotate the headlights of the vehicle forward, then fit the arms into the side of the truck the way you would do with many other versions of Optimus Prime. Make sure you peg everything in place and fold up the side window panels. Now do the same thing on the other side. Next, open the front windows again, then fold down the roof section fitting the new grill and headlights into place, and be sure to peg the sides of the truck into place to hold everything together. The fog light sections can peg into the bumper. You can then close the front windows, peg the side panels of the truck in place, rotate the front wheels up 90 degrees and peg them into place. And last but not least, Fold the knee sections up 180 degrees to cover more of the thighs in robot mode. And that's it for the transformation. Now we'll take a look at the truck mode. I would honestly have preferred if the back wheels were fully exposed, and I think that the silver side windows might have looked better if they were painted a shade of blue that would have better matched the front windows. Initially, I didn't care much for the Cybertronian look of the front end of the vehicle, but it's really grown on me. I like the translucent blue windows, headlights, and grille section, and even the overhead lights give the vehicle a really aggressive, almost Mad Max style appearance. I like the silver gas tanks, and I think that overall the proportions of the vehicle are really good. Again, I don't think that the battle damage paint applications add anything in this mode either. The silver paint applications on the robot's toes makes for great brake lights on the back end of the vehicle, and from this angle you can see how hollow the truck mode is from the back, which in my opinion is no big deal. The vehicle mode is where I really think that we miss the longer smokestacks from the days of old. The wheels roll just fine, but I would have preferred if they'd done normal circular painted rims rather than these stylized ones that we got here. The roof of the vehicle has lots of nice molded details, and the grey plastic vents really enhance the back end of the truck. The underside of the vehicle looks fairly clean, except for the battle damage that we discussed a few times earlier. And that's it for the truck mode. Siege Optimus Prime has a number of ports for you to attach weapons, one at the back end of the truck, one at the side, two on the roof, one at the back of each smokestack, one where the trailer hitch is, one on the left back of the vehicle, and one on the left side of the vehicle for a total of nine ports for you to attach Optimus Prime's weapons and Battle Masters. Here he is with the gun ported into his roof, which I don't think looks bad. It actually reminds me a lot of some of the attack modes for the old G1 Scramble City combiners. I think it looks pretty silly plugged into the back of his smokestack. I think it looks just fine where the trailer hitch section is. On the front side of the vehicle, again, I think it looks fine. I mean, it would look better if he had two weapons for some symmetry, but again, I think it looks fine. And the same thing for the back end of the vehicle. I, I do think that looks fine as like an attack mode. Here's the shield. I really think that the best place for the shield is really where the trailer hitch is. I quite honestly think it looks a bit silly anywhere else on the vehicle. If I had to attach both weapons, this is how I would attach them and display them in vehicle mode. Here's a quick comparison between my G1 version of Optimus Prime and the Siege version in vehicle mode. Aside from the fact that they're both trucks with similar color configurations, I don't think that they could look any more different. The Siege truck has much more anime accurate colors. In the case of the Vintage Prime, I think that the colors are much more rich and the use of chrome really makes the parts pop. If you want to talk quality, you can't beat the die cast parts and rubber tires on the original toy. 
Now for more of a size comparison, the figures are pretty close to the same width, however the Siege version is slightly taller. Taking a look at the side view of the figures, the Siege version is clearly longer by about a robot foot, but I think that the figures are in more or less the same scale. Alright folks, I hope you've enjoyed this review. In conclusion, would I recommend adding a Transformer Siege Optimus Prime to your collection? Despite the high price point for what I think is a fairly small figure, and the absolute fail when it comes to the battle damage paint applications, I really think that this figure is an excellent Cybertronian nod to some of the masterpiece versions of Optimus Prime that we've seen in the past. It also feels really well made. More specifically, the plastic quality feels really good compared to other Transformers figures that have been released in other models. Transformers lines. I really think that this is a terrific futuristic looking version of Optimus Prime and that it would make a great addition to any Transformers collection. I highly recommend it. Thanks again for watching everyone. Take care.